Hi, ciao, hello, hello. Oggi, today, we talk about choosing the wood. How I do this and how you might see I have a little bit, this is really a tiny part of, of wood I have and uh, here there are a few cellos and then I, I have actually the most uh, wood I have outside of town at my house and uh, even in other locations a little bit here a little bit there but then if I need it then I bring it here in town into the sanctuary where the workshop is and then more and more there's more wood around and then I, I at a certain point I need more room and then I bring it back home and so the wood is going back and forth and I tell you why and how comes that I have my pieces all around the workshop and how I'm choosing my wood okay come I show you here this here is also some pieces actually pieces are all over the workshop uh, this is now the, the wood which arrived for a specific violin, only one, and then I took the, the wood for five uh, violins because I, I thought this is nice and there's a, the whole bags, one piece bags, and then I have here some, even some spruce over there in the, next to the bandsaw, I have the whole floor everywhere wood this is from Bachmann Rudolf Bachmann who is also selling wood and you can choose the right tree with the right number once you know the right tree then you can just place order and say send me from the tree number and then he's sending you the tree and um, things like this so there are a lot of, of people taking a lot of attention to the wood and I think the wood is actually uh, the main uh, material the violin is made and we don't have to make now here new uh, strange things but on the other side a good maker should be able to make out of every kind of piece of wood a good sounding instrument okay now it might be that the character of the sound is a little bit different but response, equilibrity, projection, those are actually um, characteristics which are the result of, of how the instrument is made. The character of the sound is made by the wood itself. So now we don't want to make now the top out of maple and the back out of spruce. No, we just leave everything how it should be. The top is actually moving a lot so we make it out of spruce. And certainly if I can choose where to take the spruce from, why should I take it from a different valley than Stradivari Gurnieri Amati when it's so close and nowadays actually it's close for everybody with the, just with the click of the mouse you can get it also you can get it exactly from the right area and furthermore in order to make things a little bit easier for myself I always try to get a big stock of spruce from the same tree in order that I can get used to it but then specifically there are sometimes some instruments where I'm searching for a specific wood which I don't have among my thousands of tops so then I go and I'm searching and I'm contacting all the ones who are selling wood if they have something like this or because uh, the wood needs something for a specific copy or the grain should be like this or it should be seasoned or sometimes people come to me with a specific piece of wood and they want me to make a violin for them out of that wood. I have here one nice instrument which is here now waiting to be finished. This is a wood which has been 48,000 and I think 630 years, something like this is the test of the um, physics uh, of the carbon. Uh, this was in, in New Zealand underneath the earth in a very um, without any air over there uh, and then I certainly I made out of this wood two violins and one is you can listen uh, Violino di Sara it was for charity and um, the, 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 the man also from north of Milan from Brianza he also uh, had a violin made for himself a 
that was a nice project and this is again a wood which he gave me I asked him and so I'm also still making that violin and then I made a, also the ribs part of it out of it a little bit of maple just to make something a little, a little bit strange and particular and I still have to complete it it's somehow my free time and probably will be quite expensive but I'm not now looking to make it it's, it's, it doesn't become a business here and certainly the wood is not the perfect property so the, the trick is to apply my experience to make out of something like this something great sounding and the Violino di Sara was very interesting so which means that actually out of every piece of wood you should be able to make a good sounding instrument but just to make things easier when I'm choosing the wood let's say the flamed maple then certainly for uh, with this for the ole bull, I'm, I'm trying to have a, a wood which is similar like the original ole bull. Maybe this one is even too nice. The original isn't that much flame, but you know, something like this, similar, so that when I make the copy, it, it gets a little bit like this. Or here, the, the testore, which I saw in Venice, I think it turned out to be very similar to the testore, the back, and also the top as it has been in the video which you can see this year in the summer when I was in Venice, right? So the variety is, uh, is, is I think is very sparkling or here I'm, I'm making a Storioni and Storioni is a little bit a mixture of Stradivari and Guarnieri and so I have the flames a little up and so if I see something like this and the flames like this say hey this becomes a Storioni. Um, when it comes to the top I'm very much looking that it is split very well and I hope you can see that very well how it is split here okay so here you can see the grain so now here it is a little bit like this because there is a something going through here so I don't use this but it's it's more that you can see how this is uh, the grain is growing and on the top I always look very much that you can see very well how the grain is and I try to keep the, the grain in a way that when the, the top is jointed in the middle that it is perfectly in, 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 in perfectly balanced and that you, it doesn't um, influence the sound at that point because then the grain is kept very long but still if it is not I even make a violin and it is in my uh, way of working that I should uh, respect the wood and make out of this also a good sounding violin and uh, this is actually the sparkling part of violin making and when you see the makers of the past what kind of wood they had not so they didn't always have so beautiful wood even Stradivari if you go through the books of Stradivari his necks and his scrolls especially were actually always very simple wood without flames and ribs and back were nicely flamed okay and nowadays we want flames all over and we I don't know but I, I, I think it is uh, interesting to have some particular uh, pieces they have to be well seasoned but still the old masters the great masters used fresh wood by the way huh? but we nowadays have the time we have a lot of pieces so we have them seasoning we search for seasoned woods if a violin maker is uh, stopping his uh, workshop or uh, things like this then we always try to get some pieces you know and we just we put it aside it's our investment for the future uh, this is a little bit my my, my message to you uh, I know that musicians always want to hear how long it is season nothing else and they don't know that the old great masters used actually very fresh wood and the instruments are still alive so don't over uh, exaggerate certainly the 48,630 uh, year old wood is very well seasoned I can tell you this is my message regarding the choice of the wood I always try to keep myself open okay and if you have a piece of wood which you thought hey would be nice to make a violin out of that maybe make some pictures measure it let me know 
And I can make a violin out of that one. Hmm? That would be something. And if it's not the entire violin, maybe we can make out the setup out of this piece of wood. Okay? So then it becomes your violin. Every piece of wood has a story to tell and every violin as well. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends. Bye-bye. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.